I could, uh, I could build a, I could build a, I could build a spaceship. Hello and welcome to the Space Doc Jury Minisode number four. I will call it Minisode. And yes, I am going to do that on every Minisode. (laughs) I've decided. It's my thing. It is your thing. You do your thing. It's my thing. Them them and Quatloos. No, we're not not going, we're not going to do Quatloos. You're in the naughty corner as it is, mate. Get on with it. All right, all right, all right. (laughs) But uh, okay, okay. Well, anyway, so well, yes, I'm Lee. I'm Andy. And uh, yeah, this this week's minisode follows on from what is probably one of the more contentious episodes for certain uh, members of your of the community here. Um, and it certainly was painful for me. Um, um uh, you anything I bloody well felt. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who have heard episode three, um, we did we did cover um, the Borg cube. And the Super Star Destroyer, and more contentiously, we covered the SSV Normandy. And to cut a long story short, uh, it was painful for me to have to rake one of my more beloved ships over the coals. And unfortunately, I went at it with a little more vigour than possibly should have been done. And we were also hamstrung by Pete, um, who had really no experience of the ship or any love of it. So we were kind of in a bit of a bit of a stymie there so there was me kind of trying to play devil's advocate and also wishing i didn't have to and poor old pete sitting there kind of saying it looks like a shrimp and things got a little heated to the point where we had to cut like a good portion of it out <laughs> yeah that, that 3 23 a.m that, that that wasn't a joke that, that, that was about <laughs> the time that we yeah it it, 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 it there, there was no sense trying to edit that into something usable no. it was just out mm. done yes now you may also notice that pete isn't here um we he's ha- in a box we have locked him in a cupboard so um yeah basically um we are yeah we will at some point for those of you who were slightly concerned about last week's episode we will at some point have to deal with the normandy in a slightly we'll revisit more... it yeah. I, I, I mean fortunately it managed to come in ahead of the x-bomber um <laughs> well, so it's not an immediate issue but at some point we will we'll go back and address <laughs> some of the issues some you heard yeah. some you didn't no but we we will go back and revisit the normandy at a future date so um yes let's let's have a chat well what's this mini sound about well as you as you heard from slightly from that segue there we're um we're talking about video games Yes, we, we we figured that you know the Normandy it's 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 a lovely ship in a video game, but one of the complaints Pete had is you never actually get to fly it. Mm. So we thought we'd have a little chat about spaceships that you can fly in video games. Yes, or not? Because let's face it, since when has anything we've ever done stayed on track? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll still be back to the Normandy within ten minutes. Trust me, Pete. Yeah, 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 pretty much. It's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna change. And like I say, I I would just like to re-emphasize for the record despite what you heard in episode three it was the hardest thing in the world for me to put the boot in on that ship but i should explain he's not been on the sugar for a while and you know he put some in his tea and it did stuff to him (laughs) yeah yeah you you don't you don't give a man who has has been on a diet beer or sugar or both and then expect to get a decent result Anyway, moving on. So let's talk about spaceships in video yes. games. Well, let's go. Let's go for the obvious route. Uh, Normandy aside, right? What What is the the spaceship that you you immediately think of when you think video games? What is the one that that you always go back to as a fond memory? For me, uh, and 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 this one might be a bit obscure to to, to listeners, but uh, bear with me. Uh, yeah. There was a game from the late nineties called I War. Or mm. Independence War, if you were in the US. Yes. Um, and this game was marketed as a spaceship in a box. <laughs> and you basically took control of a Corvette, the CNV Dreadnought 301. Um, and, it, and it was cool. It was not a fighter. It was a Corvette. Yeah. So you had to man the bridge and engineering and um, uh, en- uh, bridge, engineering, weapons and uh, helm. Mm. Uh, so you could move between the stations and, you know, you could do stuff at the helm you couldn't do at the, uh, on the captain's chair and so forth and bits and pieces mm. like that. Um, it had full Newtonian physics as well. So, you know, if you if you were scooting along at full whack and all of a sudden you turned around, 
you're still scooting around full whack the other direction. You're just facing the wrong way now. But it did let you do some really cool stuff. So you could do like those um, Babylon 5-esque turn around, shoot the guy behind you, turn around and keep on going without losing momentum. It was just a really, really well thought out game. And I, and I love the look of a ship. You know, it, it's not a flying brick, more a flying saucepan. But the important thing is it was great. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, you got meet it halfway. It had curves, but it was grey. I mean, it did have some. Yeah. It did have a big old cluster of <laughs> engines on the back as well, didn't it? Yeah, you, you've got. Uh, I'll post some pictures up on the Facebook group so you can see this properly. But it, it, picture, it's uh, kind of a saucer shape in the centre with two little stubby wings, and you have uh, a forward and a rear-facing uh, particle cannon in each one, and missile pods on the end of the wings. And then at the front, you have this de- detachable um, bridge section. So it was kind of like you could interchange the bridge section between different hulks. And as of a call, the very first mission is you have to fly your bridge section into a ship's graveyard to find the most intact hulk to salvage, and that's how you come across the Dreadnought. That was um, very cool. There's a fantastic video, uh, again, and I will post this on the Facebook group. It's like 15 minutes long. And even today, it's one of the best CG spaceship battle things to come out of a computer game ever. It's so much fun to watch. You- you've seen it, haven't you, Lee? Yes, yeah, I, pl- I played it. I played it. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. Uh, and, and the game is now on good old games as well. So uh, as soon as I get a working back that I can boot camp <laughs> off of, I will be giving that another go. There is actually, though, and I think this comes with good old games, there's an expansion pack. So, so as long as you don't know the story for iWar, uh, you serve in the Commonwealth and you have these bad guys called the Independents or the Indies, and they steal Navy ships for themselves. And one of the things they do with these is they graffiti the ships and give them new names. One of the ships, for example, is renamed the Under New Ownership, which I thought was great. Um, yeah. You had the Indecent Proposal. Uh, th- th- it's just fantastic uh, names. But in the add-on, what happens is you're one of the Indies and you steal a Commonwealth ship called the Rome mm-hmm. and they rename it the Spartacus, which I thought was <laughs> genius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I War was definitely a, a lovely game and, and, and the ship dy- dynamics, as you say, and it was, it was all spawned off of of um, one of my favourite games on the on the Commodore sixty four. Look at me going back in time. I uh, know it was oh, on the Atari into the mists of time into and the space. Of time. It was based on a game called Warhead, which was released by Firebird, and um, it had the same thing. It was done by the same people, but you never ever got to see your ship. Your ship was essentially was a was a polygon, um, a polygon rock with a couple of engines sticking out the side. So, so we're talking like asteroids sort of thing. Uh, the, uh... The, the, uh, it, well, it was more like someone made a football out of vector graphics and then stuck some stuck two little boxes out the side and said they were wings. See, so it's funny you should mention that because at some point, I, I know you're a huge fan of Elite, the original one, aren't you? Yes. Now, I'm pretty sure the ships from the first Elite would be eligible for our scoring system, aren't they? They are... Mm. interplanetary interstellar and all this and they are by all accounts very cool spaceships you know yes, they, they, they all, are you know you can do this but graphically they're very basic just from the hardware available at the time so when we yeah. get to those we're gonna have to find a new way to address how well realized something is aren't we that was something that came up very clearly on um, the last episode was how do you score realization on a video game when everything looks as good as it could do at the time because there's a you know, it's as good as your video card could make it. You know, it's it's kind of limited. It's a bit like saying, you know, Thunderbird 3 didn't look very cool because I was watching it on a black and white telly. It was like, well, yeah, you can't tell it's bloody red for a kickoff. So there's lots of that kind of stuff that needs to be addressed when it comes to video game assessment, which is why we may have to have a specific video game round out and try and bring the Normandy back in for reassessment. I'm, I'm worried it's going to end up getting even lower next time. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I think it'll be okay. I'm just, I just think, yeah. you know, I think, you know, anything, anything you do in a video game is only as good as the technology was at the time. But some games can come out that are slightly more advanced at the time. So, I don't know. Ah, well, look, as ever, we'll make it up as we go along. Obviously, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's, so anyway, it's, it's, so, our, um, it's our motto. It is our motto. Well, no, our motto is ambitious but rubbish. <laughs> okay, our second motto. <laughs> yes, our, our second motto. Mm. That and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, so what about you, Lee? What, what, what's one of your favourite spaceship games or game spaceships or however you want to use them? I mean, I mean, obviously we've mentioned it already, Elite. I mean, I'm a big fan of that. I've been playing it on and off since the days of the BBC Model B. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you have no idea. I'm a proper elite head. So my my love, my first love 
in the terms of spaceships for video games is the Cobra Mark III, which is essentially yeah. a, a flying wing. But it's just the fact that you had so much control over its systems at the time. I mean, now more than anything with Elite Dangerous, you can you can literally customize this thing up the wazoo. But, but are it, they the same ships then in Elite and Elite Dangerous? Or yes, yes like they this? are. They are. Okay. And basically, the, the universe was kind of built around this kind of conceit that all spaceships were named after snakes. So you had the Cobra, you had the Fur de Lance, the Sidewinder, the Adder, the Python, and the enormous Anacondas. Please, 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 please mm. tell me there's a Black Adder. There has to be a Black you, you Adder can. in there. Well, now there is. In, in the Elite <laughs> Dangerous, you can customise the paint job. <laughs> so you can have a Black Adder. Um, oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah so um anyway yeah so there's yeah there's lots of snake snake based ships the game is involving trading you could go anywhere the the sad thing unfortunately for me uh when it comes to putting one of these ships up again in the space dock would be um that unfortunately it's it's been nerfed somewhat because um in the original game you could actually leap between galaxies in a single bound of a hyperdrive engine oh that's easier 10 yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> definitely it's definitely a high ten, and so you there were six galaxies you could hop between, and they would literally hop instantaneously between different systems. But it would obviously cost you a oh. huge amount of money to do. Okay, um, but they've uh, they've they've scaled it back a little bit for um, well, actually, what Elite Dangerous have they? Well, what they've done in Elite Dangerous, and this is where it wins now, is that mm-hmm. they've they've put science in on it, and they've literally modelled the entire Milky Way. Oh wow! So there's uh, over five hundred thousand star systems and oh, cool. and they get and it's online now so you get the so that you get whole bonuses for actually flying out on your asp explorer all tooled up with no ships no support behind you no space stations you can dock at just going okay. off and dis- discovering planets and systems and mapping boldly them. going and all that exactly yeah. and then and then actually coming back to like inhabited space and selling the maps which okay. then which then because it's an online game means that the actual game universe becomes slowly more populated there's a game uh which is coming out i think later this year called no man's sky have you have you heard about yes, it yeah it's a procedurally yeah. generated uh, yeah i mean that's kind of interesting but the, the problem i have with that is when you say procedurally generated, it it says to me it it's the same thing with a slightly different texture map, you know. Yeah, and you know, it's, yeah. well, I, I want I want it to have more interesting content in it. You know, we haven't mm. really seen any of that just yet. I want more story based missions. So yeah, well, I don't think um, you're going to get anything on that on No Man's Sky. I think it. I think with No Man's Sky, it, it's from what I've seen, it's yeah. all about exploration, and occasionally spaceships will try and attack you along the way, but. There's no real plot to speak of. They've not really been speaking about it at all, as far mm. as plotting is concerned. That's the, that's what Elite lacked in the original versions. Yeah. Um, with Elite Dangerous and with um, Elite 2 Frontiers, which came out on the Amiga and on the Atari ST, what they did was they started to create this whole universe of multiple multiple factions so you had the imperials the federation and the alliance and they were like um warring factions and you you would do jobs for them and that would obviously change the balance of the universe okay um which is you know so you so effectively you're making your own stories up and and the missions they would give you were procedurally generated but okay you know you you would be able to sort of evolve evolve the universe as you you saw fit and they and the thing would change around you based on your allegiances because um because I, I think you like me. Um, having a nice spaceship is all well and good, but with a computer game, you want a good, strong story to drive the the narrative forward. Which is one of the reasons we're big fans of Mass Effect, yes. which I think is one of the best space operas ever. And um, we won't dwell on Mass Effect here because we did a lot of that last time out. But um, mm. I mean, in terms of games with stories, which are the leader, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Free Space. Very did you ever play that one? So, yes, yeah. And uh, Wing Commander as well. Obviously, I mean, Wing Commander was this big, sprawling epic over. Seven games was it? I think. Yeah, I think. I think, Yeah, I think it's. I think it's five official, and then there was one called Privateer, which was kind of a unofficial okay. spin-off, kind of rip-off of it, made by the by the same guys when they left. Because, um, yeah, I I never really played much Wing Commander because that was just before I kind of really got my first PC. Yeah. Um, so I've gone back and I've I've seen it since, but I, I don't have that first encounter with it and i'm sure there's a lot of people out there are big fans of the tiger claw and mark hamill and all that but for me mm. free space was that 
kind of space combat simulator game, uh, which I absolutely adored that game so much. Uh, mm. Very Babylon 5-esque, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I big, mean, big odds. Like that. Yeah, especially the Sheevan war cruisers, which were basically like, it, well, essentially they were, weren't they? Shadow crabs, but they were more it was, it was, it was It was kind of like a cross between the Volons and the Shadows, like they got together and had babies. Uh, and, and they were described as this force of nature who, when racers get too powerful, they come and just wipe the slate clean and then let the next lot come along. That Again, like familiar. the Reapers as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm seeing a recurring feed here, but yeah, it, they, they were... They were some some great storytelling in those ones as well. Um, also, uh, w- w- should, should we talk a little bit about Homeworld? Because although yeah, you don't home, fly ships in there, Homeworld's great. I mean, Homeworld's yeah. Homeworld's a, a, a smorgasbord of spaceships. You, you know, of all classes that you can. You got around. everything from little little one man scouts up to big fuck off battle cruisers and motherships, which are just you know flying bricks. We yeah. like our bricks. Yes, well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I love my brick. Um, but yeah, Homeworld, and, and uh, they've just recently uh, re-released Homeworld, the remastered edition, so it works with all the latest PCs and Macs and mm. everything. But mm. how powerful is that game, especially with the music? You know, you get the adagio for strings when you come Absolutely. back to Carrick for the first time and it's burning. Yeah, I mean, that's it's just... amazing. And it's stunning to look at. I mean, even today, it's the nebulas and, you know, it's the, the lighting effects are just really, really cool. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, t- I, tell you, I tell you what, just while you were talking about free space, yeah. there was, now this is this is me putting on my old retro gamer hat, there was uh, a game. A that, yeah, yeah <laughs> rock on. There was a couple of games with with spaceships in them that you that probably forgotten to the mists of time, though I'm hoping anyone listening might remember at least one or two of them. Mm-hmm. There was one released by Ocean Games, I think it was on the Commodore Amiga, called Epic. And essentially it was Battlestar Galactica. It was a whole there was a whole fleet of um ships which were on the run from their homeworld, much like Homeworld in fact. But you Well were... Homeworld was just, just a very quick segue. When they were pitching that, they wanted to do it for Battlestar. This was before mm. the Reimagined series, but they couldn't get the rights. No, but the load of modding community basically saw that and did exactly that, didn't they? They made a Battlestar yeah. mod for it. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. with, with Epic, it was actually a flight sim where you were effectively a Viper pilot. And so you would literally be in your big, massive battleship. You weren't doing anything. The commander would be doing stuff and you'd have sort of interludes between missions where the commander would talk to you because you're the leader of the one flight wing or something and then all of a sudden he would sort of suddenly that you know the the fleet's under attack scramble scramble and you'd all have to do a dogfight around all these massive capital ships which you could oh, yeah you know you couldn't fly but obviously you had to protect and it was kind of it was kind of the amiga's answer to x-wing versus tie fighter and x-wing alliance which were doing yeah. gangbusters at the time on the PC. And it was kind of the Amiga's last hurrah, and it was a fantastic game. I love it. I loved it to bits. Awesome. Um, well, it's, it's, it's funny you should mention next week, because obviously any talk about science fiction games and so forth, we've got to reference Star Wars and absolutely. X-Wing, TIE Fighter, X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. I mean, for me, my favourite was TIE Fighter. Mm. You know, you're, you're a pilot for the Empire, you've got all the different TIE ships, um, and you've got that cool little story interludes with i mean there were terrible graphics from the time and all this but uh that that was a really fun way to kind of expand the star wars universe and see things from a slightly different angle yeah with the imperial um well my brain sorry i was just suddenly <laughs> gone really loud but um yeah it was the um was it the imperial inquisitor who was coming along yeah. for the emperor and dropping little hints off at you which I thought was very cool because that kind of it that was did a, um, did a great got, job in, inducted into the cult of the empire or whatever it was. Um, yeah, the, the the order of the emperor or something wasn't it? Yes, and you had um, was it Grand Admiral Thrawn was in one of the episodes, one, one of the missions I seem to recall. Yeah, blue yep. eyes, uh, bl- blue blue skin, red eyes, which That's was great. Yeah, um, and, and every time, time you succeeded except... in the mission, it would play Imperial March. And yes, it was through a fucking eight bit bloody. <laughs> Um, sound system, but it was still amazing. That is the coolest <laughs> theme song. <ever>. Yeah, <laughs> I always remember yeah, that. Um, but what's it called? Um, what, one of the staples which came out of those games was you know you had the kind of story with the um, the interlude bits where you'd be on your big capital ship in between. Um, and I think 
Wing Commander did those the biggest. Um, I also remembered you always used to get medals and you'd have a little showcase of your medals as you finished missions. You remember that? Mm, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you used to get you used to get them for saving your your wingmen, bringing down capital ships, yeah, all that kind of stuff. I mm. I mean, I mean, funny enough, I loved Tie Fighter, but I, that came out just as I got my first PC. I just moved from Amiga to a PC. Okay. And so my PC wasn't quite up to snuff, but by the okay. time by the time I got my my PC really rocking it, um, the X Wing Alliance came out, and that for me was was the was my Star Wars game because you got to yeah. fly the Corellian Corvette. The story was a lot stronger as well. It was. I mean, you had uh, you had you had CG cutscenes with that robot. Was it, was it, was it your, your Was the ship? Was that it? Yes. Yeah. You something like something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you actually got to fly the Falcon into the Death Star during uh, the Battle of Endor. Yeah, that's which right. Which was a fucking pain in the ass mission. <laughs> yeah, but but it was also really cool because you could actually leave your AI to fly the ship, and you could go to the um, go to the gunnery emplacements, or oh, you, oh, yeah. or you could set them to do the gunnery bits, and you could fly the ship, and you could either fly it in first person, which was not advisable with a Falcon. Um, or you could, um, or you could fly it in third person, which mm-hmm. I thought was brilliant. So, yeah. But um, while we're on the Star Wars front, let me just also give a shout out to the Ebon Hawk. Oh yes, um, from in, in many ways the spiritual ancestor of the uh, the Normandy. Exactly. Yeah. In in very many ways. I mean, if and, and, and 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 I'm just going to throw this out there: the interior doesn't fit in the exterior of that either. No. Just say that. Leave it at that. <laughs> it doesn't. Luckily, I haven't it put it. <laughs> it does. It does not work at all. Um, but no, as far as it goes, the Ebon Hawk was, for those of you who don't know, was the um, hero rebellion ship um which was used in um the bioware game knights of the old republic fantastic game and now available on ios so you can play it on your phone on the tube on the way to work and and on humble bundle if you uh pay a tenner you can actually get uh knights of the old republic knights of the old republic 2 and all the x-wing games so uh very yeah. much worth it if you've got a pc very very, very cool uh, yeah. absolutely love um, Knights of the Old Republic. Mm. I mean, it, 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 it's very much the predecessor to Mass Effect. Yeah, um, yeah. in all in in everything in the way in the way it moved the flying between the planets, the the uh, combat to a certain degree. I mean, yeah, the the story investment. I mean, I mean, I mean, the big difference is you have lightsabers here and HK forty seven. Who is awesome? <laughs> Would you like me to assassinate this meat sack? <laughs> um, oh, yes. yes. Um, one day we'll do a robot space dot jury, and he's at the top. I'm sorry. Oh, abs- oh no! You no arguments from me on that one. HK forty seven. Besides, if he's not the top, he is going to come and kill you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He'll, he'll. He'll. Yes. I'm sorry, master. Do you want to keep? So. Breathing? So. So. While we're on the subject of um, interiors which don't match the exteriors, <laughs> gonna... I think that's a beautiful segue to talk about Halo. And the Ooh. pillar of autumn, the pillar of autumn, uh, the the brick of the sky. Um, yeah, I'm... again, it's 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 in my wheelhouse. It is a flying brick. I mean, this first appeared in Halo One back in oh two thousand and three, I think it was. Ironically, Maybe even earlier, actually. Ironically, I just got the Master Chief collection for my Xbox One, so I'm going to see the remastered version very soon. Uh, the remastered one is, is very good, but so the, the the exterior of a pillar of autumn, certainly in the remastered and in Reach, is very well realized. Um, mm. I mean, again, I just looked it up. It was 2001 was um, Halo 1. So, mm. you know, it, it, it's been a while ago. And, and at the time, it was... Y- you think the Omegas looked bad. This was this was worse. Yeah, it but, was definitely an Omega without the without the ambition. It didn't even have it, spinny bits, did it? <laughs> it? It really didn't. It was, it was yeah. But they, they've revamped the exteriors, which is great. But one thing they haven't fixed, because they can't fix it, is the interiors. Um mm. And if I can find it, I will put this up on the um, uh, the Facebook group for people to see. But there's basically a five mile no, it's like a five mile long racetrack along the top of a ship. Yep. Which, if you overlay it over a ship model, it's just reaching out off into the distance. Um, it's it's just hilarious to see that there is. In fact, I have found the picture here. I'm going to send it to you in the chat. And and I know this is terrible listening for you people, but it will be on the Facebook group later on. But yeah. I just want to show this to Lee because, yeah, I mean, I mean, for those of you who don't know, the racetrack that Andy's referring to is actually um, from the last scene in the last mission. You have to escape mm. from the Pillar of Autumn. 
Um, yeah, after detonating just, it. Yeah. So, 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 Lee, in, in the best traditions of um, shitty superheroes, mm-hmm. describe what you see. Well, what I see is I see the Pillar of Autumn and what appears to be a a, a, a racetrack that appears to be at least ten times the length <laughs> of the Pillar of Autumn. You, I, you've got an elevator shaft, which is yeah. even taller than the ship ship is it's like the elevator shaft extends out from that yeah and then you have this <laughs> yeah it, it's clearly nonsense i mean what we're looking at here is is the dribblings of a madman trying to trying to make this stuff fit it just no way on earth is not no way is this going to work but um you know video games what are you going to do i mean yeah the, you know, I mean, the, the Normandy was only out by a couple of couple of feet and maybe a deck, but this is out by pretty much like six ships' length. I mean, this thing is ridiculous. It, it, it's, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it's. I, I, I promise you, folks, I will stick this on the Facebook group when this episode goes out, and you can you can you can laugh along with us. Yeah, but the, the pillow of autumn aside, I, I do again because they're largely flying bricks, but I do have an affinity to the um, UNSC ships in. Halo, mm. except ironically the Infinity, the one you'd all think I'd love because it's the biggest brick. But mm. I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the Infinity. I like the um, I like the Amber Cloud and Forward Unto Dawn, which are the frigates in two and three. Yeah, um, and I really like the Spirit of Fire, which is the ship from Halo Wars, which is yeah. a, an RTS one, uh, and it's got that kind of cool armored hood over mm. the front of it, um, and yeah. it's got. It's kind of like the Roger Young from Starship Troopers. It's, it's primarily a drop ship. So mm. it carries all these big heavy landing craft underneath um, mm. the overhang of the Marmot Hood. And that's pretty cool. You've got a big glass window for the bridge as well. Yeah. Peter would like it. You can see where the bridge is. Well, I'll tell, <laughs> tell you what Peter would like would be the Covenant, yeah. the Covenant cruisers because those things look very oh. um, Romulan Warbird, I think is safe. Well, not only that, Anne Marie would love them too because they're all purple. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots yeah. and lots of purple. So, so for that reason alone, I think Amory's going to make Peter play Halo. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> Which is only a good thing. <laughs> well, we, well, I don't know. From from the, from reading on his Twitter about him trying to play Mass Effect again was um, it felt painful. I felt pain through the 140 yeah. characters. <laughs> so I'm not sure about that. Uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, the, the Halo games are very good, and and in one of them you get to fly a fighter as well. Uh, I think that's in Reach. Yes, you get to do a little bit of uh, the rapier, old-fashioned space combat and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's the saber, wasn't it? Actually, it's oh, the, the saber. saber. Sorry, yeah, I knew, well, I knew it was a knight, a sword of some kind. I mean, yes, I mean that's that's the one thing with space games. I mean, the the there aren't many where you get to fly the big big cruisers. I mean, big capital sh- big ships, capital sort of things, ships, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is always fighter-based stuff, you know, X, the X series, X Rebirth, Beyond the Frontier, and all that kind of thing. They're all fighters. Um, the only mm-hmm. one where you get to really fly a massive capital ship is EVE Online, but then it's like flying yeah. a spreadsheet. Um, it, 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 I, I've, I've never played it myself. I've got friends who play it, um, and, and I've seen pictures. I mean, I mean, personally speaking, a lot of those ships don't work for me from an aesthetic point of view um no there's one which is a giant titan which i think i've also seen in an ann summers shop <laughs> said that, better. yeah um yeah but yeah it's it's uh, again even with my affinity for flying bricks even i i have limits and yeah that, I, I again when we were coming up with our sizing system we said anything larger than i think and i can't remember off the top of my head but we, we said you get to a certain point and then it becomes just silly k isn't it and and yeah and and, and eve ships are just silly yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I tell you, my one, my one moment with one of those capital ships was um, when I got they were doing a free thirty days on Eve, which was obviously the sugar to get you in into it. And I was sitting there, and I'm doing, I've got this little tiny pod, which no joking was about. I mean, in physical terms, was probably about the size of my desk with a seat in it, and it just got a little canopy, and you'd fly out and you'd earn your money by doing some mining. Mm-hmm. What I didn't realise was that I'd flown just a little bit too far out and I'd gone into a PvP area and mm-hmm. there was some enormous battle coming on. And there was all these ships and they're all fighting each other and it's very pretty to watch because you can't really do anything else when your ship's mining because it just sits there and mines and then says, I'm ready and you fly it back. And then all of a sudden, this Titan just appeared and no joking, it filled my screen from top to bottom and rolled past and 
took a roughly speaking. I mean, now bear in mind this is a video game, so these things move pretty fast because you know. Yeah. Yeah, they well, they you just you know they they don't ever slow down. You don't want to be sitting there forever just pressing forward. So what happened was this ship just kept moving and kept going past and kept going past and kept going past and kept going past and, going past and it became like you know like um, space balls. Yeah, space ball one. Yeah, where it just keeps going and going and going. You think actually this is a bit of a joke, and mm-hmm. no no joking. This thing pretty much took about five six minutes of real time to sort of sail past me and then right at the very end some antenna that's just jutting out of the corner smashed straight through our asteroid field and me with it it was like Uh. just 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 like an aerial just hanging off the side was probably like (laughs) six times the size of pretty much every one of us newbies and the asteroid field it was in yeah and it just it was just like Okay, that's just I've I've literally been crashed into by a planet. You you crashed into by the antenna off of a planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's like someone. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I was gonna say it's like someone stuck a stuck a scale model of of Canary War of um was it the um what's the Fallujah Tower, and you know to yeah, yeah. just <laughs> just made one the size of the Earth and just hung it off the North Pole and just smashed it straight through me. Yeah, mm. it's uh th- those online games. I'm, I've never really got on online RPGs and stuff like that. Um, mm. Although I did hear an interesting thing about that one is apparently it was a massive, massive battle where they there was only meant to be about a dozen of those Titan ships in it, I believe. Yeah, and they lost six of them in this one massive battle, and then the developers have left that as a graveyard there where you can go and explore and you know yeah. find a. It's, it's it's kind of built up its own little history in this. Because it's been going a few years now, hasn't it? Eve? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And they're about so, yeah. they're about to launch um, um, the VR element now called Valkyrie. Yeah, where well, you could be under fighters, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know about. But the other big uh, online uh, multiplayer game for um, those is uh, the Star Trek one, Star Trek Online. Mm. Which I've got to say, as much as I love the idea of running around being the captain of a thing, the ships I've seen from that really don't appeal. It's 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 like. <laughs> It, it's fan wank, basically, at its worst. A the lot of Enterprise are. F. That's all I'll say. Yeah, we won't go into that. But there are some really good Star Trek video games out there where you do get to pilot ships, um, and I wanted to just touch on those. Yeah. Starfleet Academy. Did you play that one? Yes, I did. I've still PC got... version, not the not the SNES one. The I've PC. I've still I've still got I've still got the CDs sitting in my drawer right here. All, 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 all eight of your CDs. Yeah. Yeah, and the checkoff <laughs> missions. Yeah. yeah, I've got all of those. Ah, oh, yeah, that that was that was great because uh, you got to effectively man the Enterprise. You you were the captain. You had your con, your navigator. You had your science officer. You had your weapons officer. You could move between the stations, and it was all Star Trek Two. You mm-hmm. know, all the bridges were laid out like that. You had the same uniforms. You had the same graphic displays. Like when you targeted the phasers. You'd get the the red circle would go in first, followed by the blue one. Yep, the, off the car, yeah, the little which was awesome, the little descending um, reticule. Yeah, I also think that's the last quote canonical end quote appearance of Kirk, William Shatner was Kirk, because that came out after Generations, I believe. Yeah, and yeah, because they didn't they along with um, it's the same got, deal as the um, what's the other one that came out. Uh, Klingon Academy? Yeah, they, they literally filmed them with the sets they were decommissioning, weren't they? Yeah, because in Klingon Academy, which was kind of a sequel, um, you, they got Christopher Plummer and David Warner back as Gorkon and Chang. That's right. And it's effectively a prequel to The Undiscovered Country. Mm. And if you don't feel like playing the game at all, you can actually watch the entire video, yes. of the, all these video cutscenes on YouTube, which is which is loads of fun. Um but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of fun sort of uh, bridge commander sort of games. Um, oh. Starfleet Command as well, which mm. was like a tactically sort of one. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I cool. sorry, go on. I was gonna I was gonna no, say no. bridge commander was my was my go to trek trek game um, because I I I actually customized up a, a was it an enterprise a sovereign class enterprise style ship uh-huh. and then just took it for a rollout on multiplayer online. Because you could yeah. do GameSpot. Do you remember GameSpot or Game? What was it? GameSpot. I do actually. GameSpot. Yeah, yeah. And you used to be able to sort of hook into a universe, and so I hooked into a universe, and there's all these ships just floating about, and then there's like me stomping about in this big sort of sovereign class, sort of sending out messages, and if people didn't answer me, it was like, right, fine, 
fuck you, bang. <laughs> <laughs> and getting people annoyed, got got very annoyed at me. I don't uh, know. Yeah. <laughs> M- multiplayer, the problem with multiplayer is you have to interact with other people. And generally speaking, I don't want to do that. No, don't blame you. largely why I didn't. Uh, before we finish, though, there was one spaceship game which I think we should probably mention. I don't know if you played much of it. I did when I was a kid. Mm. Star Fox. Oh, my word. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel, do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Fuck you. There is... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you stupid rabbit. Um, uh. Yeah, I mean, Star Fox was the beginning of the end for my love with Nintendo, my love affair with Nintendo. I just got the I just finished the SNES and I I pretty the SNES machine and I got the um I got Star Fox with its super duper whizzy bang chip in the cartridge. And yeah, it didn't steer very well, didn't fly very well, and all I kept getting <laughs> was peop- was this frog appearing in the corner going, um Fox, no. Yeah. Like, and, and you had you had a, a frog who I, I still to this day have no idea if it was a man or a woman. Do you know what? I think at that point it didn't really matter. <laughs> it, it really didn't. You know, he's just dealing with anthropomorphic animals. But yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of fun to play though. And I've got to give him credit. Excellent use of polygons to give the impression of a ship. You know, it was, it was, it was what? Um, hmm. three, three gray triangles and two blue tri- triangles. That's give right. Give you the impression of this. You know, yeah, Arwing, I think it was called, which was really well realized for the time. I mean, again, we're mm. talking early nineties, was it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, probably earlier. Yeah, it was probably mm, mm. no, nah, might be a little earlier than that. But I mean, like, we'd have to Google it. I'm, I'm sure yeah. someone's, someone's some, someone, someone can tell us we're wrong on the Facebook. Group. Yeah, someone's <laughs> listening to this now and going, "No, you're wrong." No. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, I mean, there, there are many, many fantastic spaceships out there in the world of games i mean i I guess if any of the listeners out there have got favorites that we haven't mentioned or want to expand i mean stick them on the old facebook group share your love of ships with us because you know we like we like looking at spaceships yes we do indeed so much we started a podcast about it (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's a it's my only made episode it's only made episode three and it's already fallen apart it seems (laughs) yeah it's already fallen apart the seams you know we've come to blows and all this you know but other than that it's yeah. It's great. <laughs> um, the one last, the one last thing, because it just popped into my head, and I'm going to completely yeah. derail the format. But okay, I have to say, there's one other game which needs mentioning, just because if any of us get the chance to do it, I would love to do it. And it's called okay. Artemis. Have you Artemis. heard of it? The name rings a bell, but I can't place okay. it. Long and the short of it is: imagine you've got a Mac, I've got a PC, um, Pete's got another PC, and then like some other friend of ours has got an iPad. What yeah. you do is you get the Artemis software, and you hook in to one of the PCs having a server, and the server basically takes the information from the Mac and the PC and the iPad and anything else that's got this software on it, and they all become stations of the spaceship. I have heard about this. Yes, um, it's it's going to be a great one for um, land co-ops and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You, you get to get you because uh, you you kind of get together in your living room, set your chairs where you want your stations to be. Yeah, don your don your finest velour uniforms, <laughs> and off you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the game, the server throws challenges at you, and there's supposed to be a fifth player who has no console, and he's the captain or she's the captain telling you what to do yeah and you know basically not only do they have to sort of figure out what to do but they've also got to rely on the um rely on the crew to do what they're told <laughs> oh dear oh dear oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> so you know mr Wep- I, I can't help but think that it's something similar led to the creation of captain zapran <laughs> yeah, I think it probably did. So, um, yeah, if anyone has played that, obviously stick it up on the face, uh, Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash space doc jury. Because I tell you what, that, to me, sounds like a bloody good laugh of getting like... I don't know if we're ever going to be big enough to have our own space doc shindigs or something like that, but if we do, well, that's I... what we want to have there. Yeah, exactly. Just just every, just five five iPads... Five iPads and one PC. That's all you need. And then you can all sit yep. down and one person can be weapons, one can be shields. Uh, one's weapons and shields. The other one's communications. Another one's in helm. Then you've got um, science depa- uh, science station. And then obviously you've got the commander just watching yes. what's on the screen. 
The screen, yeah, that's that's the commander's one. He's just the screen. It's just like the front it's just of the, the screen, ship. is it? Yeah, yeah. It's just the Does, front. Is he the one that has to go off and sleep with any exotic aliens you meet? Well, <laughs> he or she, you know, less this. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, presumably, presumably, if you run across exotic aliens, you know, it's your duty. But um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so maybe you never know. Maybe one day we'll have that. But de- awesome, yeah. definitely, well, I, you- I think, yeah. Definitely, if anyone's played it, do let us know what it was like because every video I've seen, it turns into basically a fist fight with the ca- captain going, you're not listening to me as the ship explodes I, I, around I, I, I don't think the three of us should try that. <laughs> the same crew. I, I, I think we should have our own crews perhaps. <laughs> I'll beat you to death with your own iPad. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't launch that missile right now, I'm going to... Punch you in the gonads, right in the quads. I don't care what you say. Aquatic birds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. <laughs> so there you go. That's that's our mini sode, which is now somewhere in the region of about forty minutes long. But anyway, woo! So thank you very wait, much. Wait, hmm? a, a thought just occurred to me, Lee. Mm-hmm. Did, did you cut holes into the box for Pete? He has gone a bit silent, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, hasn't he? Well, oh dear, we, we've killed Peter. Um, yeah. Well, if you'd like to be a host on uh, Space Talk Show, uh, <laughs> please send your resumes onto the Facebook group, <laughs> and we'll um, we'll 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 take them under consideration. Yes, obviously. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 some experience with with video games would be nice. You know, just yes. just give us a chance to have one of those episodes. Um, so until next time, um, when we're what are we doing for episode four? It's the uh, Slave One Eagle. And Slate one eagle and, and um, Milano. The Milano, yes. So join yeah, us. The Milano, yeah. yeah, the Milano. Um, so yes. So if you like pina coladas and, and get, getting caught in the vein, <laughs> <laughs> yes, just join. Come with me and escape. Dunk! Yes. <laughs> So, until next time, thank you very much for listening. Uh, do um, subscribe and rate us on the iTunes if you can, because yes. that's all very helpful. And um, do join us on our Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash groups slash Space Doc Jury. And you can also find us doing Spaceship of the Day on Twitter, which is at Space Doc Jury. So, until next time, speak to you soon. Tatty bye. To her. Space Dog Jury is a production of Three Angry Beards for GeekPlanetOnline.com.